Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Jack Snacks. I'm Jack Devine, and today I'm going to walk you through some alternative chord voicings that will really come in handy to freshen up your take on Stella Blue by The Grateful Dead. All right, if you're into this kind of stuff, I think you're going to enjoy yourself. All right, so, you know, the cool thing is most of my lessons are on lead playing and stuff, but, but some of the chords that are available to you when you're playing Grateful Dead music are just amazing and this ep this episode is going to focus in on how to play some really interesting chord voicings over Stella. Stella, you know, we've got E major and E major 7, right? A sus. A, A major, right? And then E minor. Parallel minor, that's really cool. B7, B7, all right? And the cool thing is that Garcia's progression has this chromatic thing happening in it. Over the E chord, we get to hear that, that E, then E flat. Okay, then we come back a fret and get to hear the four, right? Then that resolves into the third of our A major chord. We're going to skip the C and go straight to the B note. That's the fifth of the E minor chord. Then the B flat is the dominant uh, flat seven of the C chord. And then the A is the flat seven of the B seven chord. Okay? And then the chorus, right, is just, just E major. So, all those chords, you know, we, we've been playing them our whole lives, you know, like that, probably. All right, so here I am going to show you a couple of changes, okay? So start out with your plain old E major chord. Now, take your ring finger off and put your pinky down, all right? And by doing that, it's not going to feel so, uh, the stretch won't feel so ambitious, okay? If you try doing this with, with the ring finger down, it definitely puts a lot more strain than if you just loosen up and change your thumb angle from being like this to down a little bit, okay? Now, that really broadens the sound by putting that F sharp down there. Okay, so that's the first alternative voicing I wanna show you. It's, that's an E. That's a second, okay? That's an F sharp. It might be called a nine to a lot of folks as well. I think of the nine more as this sound, okay? But this is, okay? So we're hearing the two rubbing up against the three. They're a whole step apart there, right? And that's a really pretty sound. Now, we could do one, two, three, four, all right? And then go to our E major seven chord. Okay, or we can split up that, that first chord, E major, two, three, four. Now this is an alternate vo voicing of this chord. So what I wanna do is ask you to keep your pinky kinda there and slide it up and then put it down on the F sharp note there on the G string at the 11th fret. And then your ring finger comes here, plays the A flat. Okay. And finger is playing the fifth of the chord so now we have okay so now one two three four okay, okay. so that's our first chord we've now we've taken just standard e e Probably one guitar player is already doing that, but if you go as the second guitar player, you're adding a lot of breadth, okay? Now we get to the major seven chord, okay? Which, you know, you've probably seen voice like this, okay, or like this. Nothing wrong with any of that. Um, the other ones we can do is maybe this one. Those are all kind of basic. 
This one is a little more complicated, and I think it's really nice. Is if we were already up here in this position, I want you to put your pinky where the ring finger is and then form an A minor triad. Just like that, a flat minor triad rather. Okay. Okay, and that's, there's no extensions in there. I mean, if you wanted to, you could, I guess you could find an extension by coming up here. You could do like, do that, or maybe even something like that, or even this. Okay, which is one of my favorites. All right, and I'll break those down for you. But first, let's look at this. Okay, so A flat, B, E flat. Okay. And then on this wavelength, if we just slide that up a minor third and then put our ring finger down, we form a B triad inside of our E. So one, five, uh, major seven, add nine, five, one again. So, so far we could go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, and then we would be coming to our A chord, the sus. Okay, so let's look at, let's look at that E major seven chord again. We can take just a standard, that's an A, that's A minor. We're just gonna bring it back a fret and let the E string ring out underneath and on top we can take the B string off, okay? Or we can bar behind it and make it, okay, you gotta have a well-intonated guitar <laughs> to make that work, okay? The last one, at least, if we just bar across the 11th fret and then just put our middle finger down on the B note, we get major seven, five, nine, six, three. Very pretty voicing, okay? We could always do that as well, which I'm sure you guys know about, or yeah, so that that's about it. All right, so that's for, for the major seven chord. As we come to the sus four chord, right, we can do that. And then at the very end, before we go and resolve, one of the tricks I like to do is add the flat seven to it. Right. Now we're on to our E minor chord. Okay, so this E minor triad, if we form it out of this A, we get this, that whole motion, sorry, comes down. This is a nice E minor voicing too. We already played that as our major seven. I'm just gonna bring it down. From... Very pretty with the double B. Okay, you can lift up the index and end up with two Gs. Or you can even put the index finger here and get the ninth again. But that can be a little heavy sounding, okay? If you like that ninth voicing, you can also come up here, okay, and form the G, B, and F sharp notes here on the A, D, and G strings here. That's the 11th fret. There's no marker on my guitar, I'm sorry. That's a heavy, heavy sounding E minor chord. Okay. okay. The thing that this, this, you know, this lacks though, is that it doesn't have the B as a, the high, like you're hearing that. And what we're really looking for is something that does the voice leading nicely into that B flat note over the C chord that's about to come up. This is by far and away the coolest chord change in the whole tune. And for me, that, mm, that C7 chord, okay, with that B flat in it, that's the flat five of our parent key, right? Very, very tense, okay, so. A broken angel sings from a guitar. So C7, you can play that here, right? You can play it like this, right? That's kind of nice. The 
look out for the open B if you go with this fret. Okay? You can suss it if you want, but I don't, I'm not really a big fan of the F, right? You can do this too. All right? That's cool. Um, other C7 chords that are cool is putting the five in the bass and just forming your regular old C7 chord, okay? Again, nothing wrong with this. Or this, or this. Right. And now we're gonna come to the Big Daddy B, right? So this is this is a B7 chord that we're playing. So it's a B major with an A in it. Now we've got the opportunity to play some ornamentation over top of it, and it's not it's not to your advantage to think of this as a B mixolydian seven okay it's better to think of it like it's a phrygian dominant okay and what does that mean that sounds that sounds heavy um it's bringing in th that harmonic minor sound that we're hearing there okay so that's going to be all the notes from the b b um chord and all the notes from the c chord okay So that's, if we take the B chord here, we're gonna go. Okay, that's. Or if we're using this voicing, don't forget when we're doing Phrygian dominant, we do not, we just leave the flat seven all by itself. We don't do, okay, we don't do a one fret thing, okay? So if we're looking at that B chord here, we're gonna go. That's kind of a clever thing to... Right, now we're back to the beginning. Okay, so over top of that B chord, right, you can add little flourishes that are gonna bring in that... So we can add in some nice stuff at the end of that B7. Right, we can really, really stretch that. Okay, so that B7 is a great opportunity to alter that chord. Now you've got, um, then you've got the, just the regular old chorus. You might wanna give that a break, you know? this I want you to over top of that that last little thing before it's like and finally resolves back to Stella blue bear in mind what those melody notes are that's that's five six five sorry six five six five Stella blue right so Very, very pretty sound that you can get in with this voicing right here. Stella Blue. Okay, you put that, that C sharp there. Okay, you can even do it like this, right, where you go, uh, ah, sorry, it's like this, the Hendrix voicing from Still Raining. Stella Blue. Okay, so th that's... E9. We can do major sevens, right? We could do. That's that's tough with uh, the acoustic. It's a little out of tune here, um, but that that one there with the that stack of fourths. That's really cool. Okay, then. Alright, and 
I guess this is probably the last little trick to teach you over top of that B chord, is that when we come into there, right? Right, that whole moment, you can take the B and put your pinky down right there and form this little diminished voicing and then slide it down three frets. And then go back to that E sound, okay? So. super pretty song a really a great opportunity if you're the second guitar player behind the singer to add some color vis-a-vis -vis some of these uh voicings okay so you don't want to go too far you don't want to gussy it up so much that it distracts from the melody but these are great ways of maybe being a supportive more supportive player than just playing you know very standard voicings all right i hope this uh lesson helps you out and maybe helps you bring your um your guitar game, you know, your chops to a new level on uh, Stella Blue. If you're a Grateful Dead fan, I really do appreciate you tuning in and watching and getting uh, supportive of the channel and su subscribing or commenting below. And uh, I hope to hear from you soon. All right. Peace. Take care of yourselves. I hope you have a great summer. Bye bye.